In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Reading Test 7, Section 1, Passage 2. This passage is adapted from David Rotman, How Technology is Destroying Jobs, 2013 by MIT Technology Review. And this is the social science passage. There's always going to be one of these typically describing people's behavior or some type of societal trend, and that's what we had here. So again, I assume that you've read this passage, and we'll just review. In the beginning, we had these two scholars at MIT. They were arguing that impressive, impressive advances in computer technology were the reason responsible behind the sluggish employment growth of the ten, last 10 to 15 years. And there was even a, a chart here in, uh, in this passage, let's just take a look, we'll scroll down, where it showed that typically when productivity was increasing historically, so productivity is this solid line, when it increases, it typically is followed by an increase in employment. But here you see around the year 2000 starts to open up this gap. And that's what these two scholars were arguing, that technology was really displacing a lot of these jobs. And there's some detail. And also toward the end, we had Lawrence Katz. And he, this was, I wouldn't call it the counter argument, but his argument was that he really wasn't sure. And this has happened before, and there's always new jobs created. So he was saying that, the jury's still out on this. He wasn't convinced. He wasn't as uh, dismal as, as the two scholars at MIT and, and who really felt that um, it was um, a sad reality. All right, so let's take a look at the questions. So question number one, the main purpose of the passage. This is a general question. And again, general question, this is the passage as a whole. You can come back to these. I'm just going to do these in order now, but they're always going to use broad general language, and sometimes they disguise it. They don't really state exactly. They use broad or general terms in the answer choices. So we already know, we've predicted this, that it's really it's an, an analytical passage, and it, it attempts to explain this disparity between the increase in productivity and it, there wasn't a concurrent increase in employment. Does it examine the role of technology in workers' lives during the last century? It doesn't examine the role. I mean, that's part of the reason behind this, this gap, but that's not what the whole passage is about. Does it advocate or argue for better technology to enhance workplace conditions? Totally off point. Does it argue for changes in how technology is deployed? No. Does it assess the impact of advancements in technology on overall job growth? This is exactly what it does. See how they use this broad general language? They don't say that it, it, it was responsible for a decline in jobs. Assess the impact of advancement on job growth. Nothing descriptive there, but that is the right choice. It's broad and general, D. All right, now if you look at 12 and 13, I always get in the habit on the reading when you look at a question to scan down at the second because there's several of these two-part questions usually in every passage and so we're gonna we know that the evidence for 12 is between 1 and 38 it's bound by these these this range so according to these two scholars advancements in technology since approximately 2000 have resulted in what and that let's go back to the beginning of the passage we know the evidence is between 1 and 38 and we would always independently find the evidence so at the beginning of the passage these two scholars have argued that impressive advances in technology from improved tech from improved industrial robotics to automated translation services are largely behind the sluggish employment growth of the last 10 to 15 years so this is what i call a bonus two-point question when at the very beginning of the range in one through six you see the answer and then you really get two questions right away so it really saves a lot of time and so we can answer both of these, right? The best evidence, we know it's from one to six, and now we can go back and answer 12. Since 2000, we know that technology has resulted in the low job growth in the US, and that was sort of what the graph confirmed as well. All right, let's take a look at 14. The primary purpose of 26 to 28, and this is what I call a function question, what's the purpose like of this, this sentence? So let's take a look at 26 to 28. All right, so 26 to 28, we have, all right, here it is. In economics, productivity, dash, the amount of economic value created for a given unit of input, such as an hour of labor, dash, is a crucial indicator of growth and wealth creation. 
So we have productivity, which is really a term. And then we have this, this non-essential clause. We saw these a lot in the writing section where it's just giving extra information, right? It's not crucial, but it helps explain or define, in this case, the term. That's what it, it does, bound by these dashes. So what really what it does is it defines the term. And so up to productivity and right, it's D, it just explains the term. All right, and let's take a look at, I think we're just gonna do 15 because 16 and 17 are two part questions. So this will be the last one in this video, which is clear, and this is a vocab or a word in context. And so we wanna see in the context of the passage, what does it mean? And usually with a straight, with an easy word like clear, they're testing the secondary meaning and try to predict these before returning. So we're gonna see what clear means in the context of the passage in line 35. All right, so the pattern is clear, colon, as businesses generate more value from their workers, the country as a whole became richer, which fueled more economic activity and created even more jobs. The pattern is clear, and then we have the statement. So really what you're looking for is it's really undeniable, right? There's, there's no doubt here. And so let's take a look at the choices, the, right? We have it's clear. It is unmistakable, right? Without any doubt. And uh, what's the name of a rock band, right? On the old SAT, they used to uh, just remind me of this term. You probably won't see it on the new test, but they used to test this word a lot. And it means no doubt without any ambiguity. And it was unequivocal. This is an unequivocal fact. It cannot be disputed. It's unmistakably unclear. clear. <laughs> 